Before we get into circle strafes, I want you to understand degrees. And to establish our degrees correctly, we must first have a relative position. I won't be using the enemy as our relative position, but rather the pip in conjunction with the enemy ship as our relative position. Here we have a ship with the pip on the right hand side. If I were to tell you to move the pip in 180 degrees, what would that position look like? Well, it would be as easy as a crossover. A crossover is established by moving the pip from one side to the opposite side. This is the exact same as a 180 degree change. If the pip were on the top and I were to perform a 180 degree change, it would go to the bottom, another 180 degree change, and it would move back up to the top. Let's move 90 degrees back towards our original position. If I wanted to move 90 degrees south of the ship, then I would move in this direction. I can move 90 degrees back the way I came, and 90 degrees further north. Finally, we have 45 degrees. And 45 degrees is just half of 90, so one 45 degree movement and another 45 degree movement will give you 90 degrees. Now that we're back at our original position, let's go over the degrees. 180 degree change, 90 degree change, 180 degree change, 45 degree change, 180 degree change, 45 degree change, and 90 degree change back to our original position. So how do we make these changes? The lead pip will give you 2D information on the relative movement between you and the target. Closing speed is responsible for the third dimension. At long distances, we use the pip to get positional information. Once within 300 meters, we judge relative position by looking at the opponent's ship. Let's start by demonstrating how my inputs and the opponent's inputs affect the pip. On the left hand side will be my ship, also showing you the inputs on the bottom center of the screen. On the right side we will show the opponent doing the same moves that I am doing on the left hand side. There's a lot going on in these slides, but I figure I'd leave it up to you to just repeat it and watch it over as needed. And if you're still lost on a lot of these topics, please check the description to find my guides playlist, where you can find the structured layouts of tutorials to get you to this level. Now that we are caught up, let's get into the circle strafe pattern. This is done by performing a circle in front of the target while keeping the relative position as close to zero as possible, meaning we're not really getting closer or further away, but maintaining a proper distance. When we start to approach or get away from the opponent is when we enter something known as the corkscrew maneuver. If you like the animations and would like to see more, check the description box for a link to the Discord. In there, they'll be posted in the combat maneuvers section. Okay, so now that you know the basics, let's kind of demonstrate how these uh, moves are applied. I'll be using head tracking to demonstrate some of these things, uh, but you can use something like padlock view to look at the target when you're coming in at different angles. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to apply a little bit of right strafe and you're going to see my pip starts to go to the left. Now, I don't want to get far away from him, so I'm going to left strafe and go in the other direction. The pip will now be to the right and I'll start to pass him going left. Now, I don't want to get too far, so let me neutralize the pip and a neutralized pip means we are no longer relatively moving. From here on, let's show you a little bit of the degree changes with my strafe inputs shown below at the bottom center of the screen. If I strafe up and the pip starts going down and I want to do a 180 degree change, then I need to strafe down to bring it in the other direction. This can be achieved in any form that you want. For example, if I want to change 180, all I would have to do is roll this way and strafe up. That is still a 180 change. Here's 180 change with a left strafe. As you can see, it's much slower because the bottom thrusters are much stronger, but it's still being, it's still possible to do it um, even when rotating. The more difficult things you can do, which also creates changes, is say we go up strafe, the pip is now to the bottom. What I can now do is turn my ship in the direction of the pip and boost forward to change its direction. And here we have it neutralized. Okay, let's go over all the degrees now that we're here in the ship so you can see the strafe inputs. 180 degree change. 90 degree change. 90 degree change. 180 degree change. 45 degree change. 45 degree change. 45 degree neutralize. Now the pip is very good for showing you this information when you're really far away from the target, but there's going to be a point where you eventually get close to your target and the pip stops to be as effective. 
The reason for this is because we're so close to the pip, it doesn't move much when we adjust, though you'll still see a little bit of tiny variations. Uh, what you want to start doing is treat the enemy ship as the pip. So for example, the pip or the enemy ship is on my left hand side and I want to move it to the right, then I have to strafe left. And here we neutralize. So if I strafe up, the pip is now to my bottom. I'm going to roll, bring it back and neutralized. This is important when maneuvering because a lot of this has to do with momentum change or inertia. Let's take for example that I want to change directions on this enemy ship and I am nose to nose with the enemy ship. If I push to the right and then roll, I can get this circle strafe orbit going, which allows me to kind of come in in a circle pattern and it can be applied with complete right strafe. Out of all, the up strafe would be the most powerful. The goal is to establish a roll by not having the pip change position, but rather go around the ship. If I add too much roll, the pip will get closer to the ship. If I don't add enough roll, the pip will move further away from the ship, like so. It's a balance between roll rate, speed change, and vector control. And neutralized. So let's talk about circle strafe patterns, speed, and distance. We're at about a thousand kilometers away. Um, and here you want a pretty round circle strafe. As you approach the target, you want it to be narrower and short, but let's go ahead and start a circle strafe here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start orbiting. I'm gonna have a circle strafe. Let me ease off on it so I don't go unconscious here. And then I'm gonna approach the enemy little by little. You're gonna see right now I'm going away from him at negative. We're gonna increase it 73, 895. And we're approaching the uh, enemy at the moment. Once I start approaching the enemy, I need to start thinking about slowing down so I don't pass him. But now because we're getting closer and closer, this rotation rate has to increase, which means my g-forces are going to increase. So it's all about timing and using it at appropriate times. When we get really close to the enemy, this roll rate now has to be much faster or else you'll end up moving away from the enemy. Here's what it looks like if I do it too slow. As you can see, I separate and I get further and further away which instead of doing a circle, we do like an oval pattern. If done correctly, it should look like this. You'll see I sometimes kind of slow down and stop because my momentum control is not perfect, but once you get a nice steady rhythm, this is what it should look like. And you have a nice orbiting pattern around the opponent. Let's do it one more time. Let's see if I can maintain the nose instead of getting away from him. This can be done in any direction and you'll have to apply left strafe as needed. And by no means is this easy and you have to have really good control of your forward and back thrust. If this is something you struggle with, keeping your, your nose in front of the target and not getting too close or too far, then I recommend checking my videos and looking at my control configuration settings so that you can get something that works better for you. We'll link it below in the description as well. So again, I'm showing you the pip to give you an idea of how I'm approaching these targets and you can see uh, a tool that gives you an indication of how you're performing the circle strafe, whether you're performing it correctly or you're rolling too slow or too quickly. But when we get closer, you need to have a visual understanding of what you're doing and uh, you can do that by now looking at the enemy ship instead of the pip. We're gonna go ahead and unlock Leo here and what we're gonna show is we're still going to apply the circle strafe, but now because I have no pip, the only relative motion I have is the ship in front of me. And this is where you have to understand that the ship is a pip. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and back away. We're going to lock in and now look at the pip instead of the ship. And we were doing the exact same motion around that pip that we were doing to the enemy ship. So the final thing we want to touch on is inversions. And that's when you reverse your circle strafes. So for example, we're going to do a counterclockwise spin here. As you can see, the uh, pip is moving around counterclockwise to the opponent's ship. If we now roll and we get the pip from the left side to the right side, like so, we can now up strafe again and start rolling in the other direction to change the direction. We'll speed it up a little bit here, up and roll. Invert, up and roll. All you have to really look at and pay attention to here is what side of the of your wing is the pip on. Right now it's on my right, now it's on my left. 
you're always rolling towards the direction of the pip. Let's go ahead and look at that without a locked on target, close to the target, so that we can demonstrate how the ship becomes the pip. Once we're about 300 meters and we start to encounter the opponent and we begin our circle strafe. Here's a counterclockwise movement. The ship is just to the left of my nose. We're gonna roll, the ship is now to my right and now I'm up strafing and rolling in the other direction. Again, now on the left, accidentally merged, but now on the left and up strafing and rolling. Right side, up strafing. Let's look at the pip and check it out again. Counterclockwise, right, clockwise, and neutralize. Now that we've seen all the basic patterns on how to do these things, let's show a little bit more advanced techniques. Let's say, for example, we're approaching with the circle strafe and we want to mix in any different direction. The reason we apply circle strafe is to always have momentum as we don't want to stop our pip and change direction. We want to continuously move that pip around as we change the direction. So here we are close to the opponent and we're going to start a strafe and we're going to change direction as needed. I'm going to apply boost as needed so that I can change direction much more quickly, but the ideal goal is to not use too much. As you can see, we kind of wave around and dance in front of the ship, but there's always a bit of roll so that the vector is always changing direction and we don't become a flat trajectory or an easy target. Here we have another demonstration with no pip this time, and we're only looking at the ship. Roll pattern, change inversion, left strafe, up strafe, roll inversion, another roll inversion, and neutralize. As you can see, this can be done without the pip once you understand your speed's trajectory, uh, but the pip is there to help you identify this trajectory and make it easier for you to find neutralization points. Let's talk about one final note, which is when you accidentally merge with an opponent and you want to maintain the circle strafe. The common mistake I see a lot of people do is they'll engage in this circle strafe, They'll approach, they'll come in too fast and they'll accidentally overshoot and they'll turn. And here they start up strafing, which neutralizes the pip and recenters. You don't generally want to do that because that makes you an easy target. And if they're looking at you, you're going to be shot a lot. The better option is to come into your corkscrew. When you merge, keep the pip on the left or the right and apply up strafe. Like this, we fall into a circle strafe pattern instead of a flat trajectory. One more time, I'm gonna accidentally go past him keep it on my left, up strafe, and once I have the roll, I can now go back to my pattern. Neutralize. So now that you've seen a basic way to do these circle strafes, let's look at a little bit more of an advanced technique. This is when we approach the target sideways and we use our forward thrusters to initiate the circle. Here we have to pitch to adjust the circle rather than using your side strafe. So here I'm only forward strafing and pitching as needed as you can see, my circle strafe is a little bit harder to apply, but it's still very applicable and it still puts us in an orbital pattern. This gives us a very fast orbit, which allows us to stay very evasive at medium and long range without having to burn any boost. So if we look at close range, here I'm approaching the target and I have him in front of me. Let me go ahead and neutralize in front of him and then I'm going to circle strafe. All I'm doing is pitching and using my forward thrust as needed. This is much harder to pull off, but it allows you to save boost as you try to orbit around an opponent without having it wasted. Here I can start using my left or right uh, strafe to get closer or further away from the opponent, but we're still, in short, doing a circle strafe. For a final demonstration here, we're going to have Leo kind of um, try to orbit around me. Now, Leo is not um, a highly experienced pilot, but he knows how to maneuver a bit and he understands the pip to a, to a fine detail. Um, what we want to do is just show you how my thrust inputs might change because of his inputs. So for example, he can go in whatever direction he wants. I want to neutralize so I can close the gap. If I don't neutralize, it will be harder for me to close it. So I have to use whatever is most powerful to do so. Here I'm using my rear engines. Here I'm side strafing. He's pushing that way. So I'm going to orbit in that direction. Use boost, neutralize it, push close. and. As you can see, as long as I'm able to maintain this pip neutralized, I can get closer and closer to him. 
Now let's look at a fighting demonstration where Leo is trying to apply damage and I'm trying to move around him. As you can see here, he's trying to neutralize and I'm trying to push around. Use my up strafe here, get around him. Use my main engines, push the pip forward, up strafe, come sideways, pass him, up strafe to neutralize, push on the side, up strafe to get around, down strafe to continue it, up strafe to neutralize, acquire target and engage. This is just a very general and, and broad idea to give you an example of how this can kind of look in combat, but every flight style is gonna affect us drastically and it comes down to your knowledge of how ships move around in the verse. This is something that you'll gain with time, but using the pip to help you understand these things will help you increase the speed at which you learn this stuff. Thank you everyone who has helped support this channel by even just being a part of the community. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one.